currently sitting in one of the terrace rice fields in Sapa, which is in northern Vietnam, and we are going to be here for the next three days exploring. There's Carson right there. He's making his appearance in the vlog intro. Sapa is known for the rolling rice fields, which you can see behind me, and it's also known for its trekking, where you get to go and see the lives of the multiple different tribes that live in this area of northern Vietnam. Sapa is also home to Mount Phanispan, which is the highest mountain in Indochina, which means Vietnam Laos and Cambodia. We visited Mount Penispan yesterday so you will see that later on in this vlog and now we'll be doing a two-day one-night trek to three different ethnic villages and we'll be spending the night in the Lao Chai region. So if you want to see everything we get up to here in Sapa definitely keep watching and subscribe to the channel because we have been doing so much stuff in Asia and we will be for the next year. So if you want to see that keep watching. So here we are in Sapa. We got in at around 2 a.m. It's classic Getting off the bus in Asia experience, you get bombarded by people trying to sell you a taxi and homestays and trekking tours at like 2.30 in the morning as soon as you pull up. So then we just like got in a taxi with this guy and negotiated the price and he took us to our hotel, which the two people working reception were asleep in the lobby and all the lights were off. So we had to like knock on the door and eventually he, he didn't speak any English and he just came, gave us our key fell asleep, woke up in the morning, there weren't any towels, and we had to book another hotel because there was some like issue with the price that they quoted on booking.com versus what they actually wanted us to pay. Um, turns out it wasn't an issue. We originally agreed to pay 300,000 and they were gonna charge us like 500,000 and said the price hadn't been updated yet in booking.com. So we thought there was gonna be this whole big thing. But, but the next morning, lady at reception was very nice and just said we didn't update the price. So it didn't take that much arguing or negotiating. And now we're headed to our next hostel. Everything smells bad. And my glasses got squished. So they're flat, look at this. pho place that I saw online. It got really good reviews and it's really busy. It's filled with locals right now. Super excited. The menu and the entire thing is in Vietnamese. I don't know if there's a vegetarian option, but I have my Google Translate locked and loaded to say <laughs> no meat and fish and I'm vegetarian. So hopefully they get the memo. But I've, it's so cute in here. Online people said that this is the best pho that they had in Sapa and they make it like in the special Sapa way as happens with <laughs> different um, places that you go, each place has a different way of making it. Yeah. Okay, so the noodles came and they are different than the ones we got in Ho Chi Minh City and everywhere else. They're kind of like more brown, um, but they're still with thick rice noodles. And then we got the tip to order the these and dip them in. So that's what we're gonna do. Usually we, I like always season the stuff up, but this broth is so yummy. I'm pretty sure the broth has meat in it, that's why they're asking me, but it's okay, it's so yummy. Yeah. It's so good. So we kind of got chased out of the restaurant a little bit because there was a lady that was trying to sell us stuff and she like chased us down the street, but not before we got to go across the street to the little bakery that was recommended to us by other foreign people that were clearly on a street food tour some old ladies, yes. cute little old ladies. And they were on a little tour, so we get it. Yeah, and so that bodes well for the restaurant that we went to, the quality of it. But they told us to try these cakes, which looked so good, and they are good. They're cookies, not cakes. They're cookies. Special Sapa Vietnamese cookies. I think they're sesame and filled with like sesame paste, they said. We got them from the bakery for 7,000 dong, and the lady's very nice. And they're quite delicious. They're like warm and soft and chewy and a little sweet, but not very sweet. Very, very delicious. So we're now inside Safa Station. This is where you go to buy your tickets for the cable car that will take you up Mount Fanaspan, which is the highest point 
in Indochina. Um, and we're gonna go see what the situation is with the tickets. And I'm gonna go by myself. I said Carson could take the funicular to the base if he's feeling brave. And maybe after that awesome photo that I got him, he is feeling brave, we'll see. I don't know. We are going up the funicular and the cable car. I'm doing the full cable car. Carson's doing the funicular. We're getting on right now. It's right behind us. The funicular cost 150 round trip to get from like downtown Safa to the base of the cable car. There's also a little area to walk around. So that's what Carson's gonna do. The cable car for a round trip ticket was 800,000 dong. So, and that takes you up to the top of the mountain. You can get a second funicular that takes you for the last final stretch, or you can walk about 1K, 600 steps, they said. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> So we've made it up the funicular. This is where I leave Carson and I'm gonna take the cable car, which actually looks kind of scary. I'm actually a little bit nervous all the way up. It is scary and I'm very glad I'm not doing it. The cable car, this way. Where I will leave you. It's time for me to get on the cable car, 10 minutes and I have to leave Carson. So we're gonna be back here in an hour. just got off the cable car that was so cool it was it was one of my favorite things we've done all trip don't tell Carson he's gonna be sad we are about to hike one kilometer up to the highest point in Indochina that means Vietnam Laos and Cambodia and look we're above the clouds it, this is so cool. Don't tell Carson. Don't tell Carson. It's a secret. This is so cool. This is the cable car. Look at that. GoPro's at 22%, so hopefully I have enough to record everything. This is... I'm blown away. This is so much better than I thought it was going to be. I feel bad for Carson. Now we have to hike about one kilometer, 600 steps up, because I'm not taking the funicular. I'm blown away, and it's also not cold. I thought it was gonna be cold, it's not cold.
it's worth it. Look at how high I've come. And I saved eight dollars. And I'm taking the funicular. person here on this platform it looks like I'm just like in the clouds well I'm above in the clouds and I still haven't gone to the top yet so many steps the GoPro is dying Kristen's gonna be upset with me because I told him I'd meet him in an hour back at the base of the funicular and it's been an hour I just drastically underestimated how many stairs there's gonna be and platforms. Look, we're going down to another one and it's 3.30. Sorry, Chris, and I haven't even made it to the top yet. But like, you can't reasonably expect me to skip all of these platforms when they look like this. It's so cool. That's where we're going. are 3,147 meters above sea level. It's so cool and we're above all of the clouds. Excursion planned our whole two day trekking tour for tomorrow. And sat on a bench for two hours. And I was a whole hour late and I felt really bad. It's okay. okay. 
So we're out of the cable car and now we're in Sapa Square, which is really just this like kind of Coliseum, no amphitheater-esque looking structure. Um, and it has this big sign behind me that says Sapa. And that is it. Alright, this is the next tour stop. It's right across the street. It's the Stone Church. You kind of speed run everything in Sapa Town because everyone's here for Fantaspin and trekking. And this is the last of our tourist destinations besides wandering through the lake. This is Sapa Park and this really cool street is a popular tourist walking street. And we've officially finished Sapa Town and we're ready for our two day one night trekking tour tomorrow. Right, it's nighttime now and we are heading out for dinner. Kristen found a place that looks really yummy for tonight. So that is where we're going and then we're really excited to have just like a chill night at the house. It's like six o'clock-ish right now and we just want to go back to the hotel and not do anything. So we ended up going to the um, soup place that's right next to our hotel and it's so, so good. Um, but I was too hungry to even vlog. We're the only ones in here and they're having like family dinner, so it's kind of awkward. Bon <laughs> chao. It was so good. It's delicious. It's like this pork meat poly thing. And it's unbelievable. So good. I said regular soup with no meat and Kristen said that on the Google reviews someone said they're a tour guide in Sapa and they come here all the time. So you know it's good. So we found a little Wilson. So on our trek today, we are going to three different villages. Like I said, we are going to the Yulin Ho village, the La Chai village, and the Savan village, which is where- An apple? You are too clean. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> like I was saying, we're going to three villages, Yulin Ho, La Chai, and Tavan. Tavan is where we're staying overnight. And Yilin Ho, Yilin Ho is where we are walking for lunch right now. So that's what we're doing tomorrow. We are going to the bamboo forest and the waterfall. We'll be getting back to Sapa around 2.30. We left at 9.30 this morning. So far, so good. So right now it's October and our guide was saying that the rice terrace fields in the north, they harvest the rice terraces in September and now they will stay empty like this until the new year. She was also saying that in the south they can harvest three times a year because there's more water and the weather is better, um, but in the north they only harvest once a year in September. walking inside the rice fields, which is really cool. It's a fun trip. Good.
just got to our spot for lunch um, and it's the hike so far has been really cool. We're in Lao Chai, which was the village that we're having for lunch. I think earlier I said it was going to be in the Yilin Ho one, um, which we just saw down in the valley. We didn't end up going there. Um, so now we're at this place for lunch. It's definitely like the tourist stop, which is okay because lunch is included. So it's not like an Angkor Wat where we got screwed on the lunch. Um, it's really pretty. It's cool seeing all the rice fields. As you can see behind us, the terrace rice fields are cool. Um, there's a ton of people selling you stuff though, like you saw in some of the clips. There's that lady that started following us in Sapa Town and she followed us all the way here for like two and a half hours. And at the start, our guide Meng, she said that there will be some ladies that will follow you. They're not like affiliated with me, but they're gonna try to sell you stuff. And once we got right to where the lunch spot was, she tried to like high pressure sales and it wasn't like good deals or anything either. So, and you know, Carson and I, like we both were like, no. Yeah, well, we don't have room. We don't want to buy anything. And so we just, but we had to sit there through the big sales pitch and all that. And it was, we felt so, so uh, bad. But the guy had said, she was like, don't feel bad. This, they do this every day. And mm -hmm. Sometimes they make sales, sometimes they don't. So it's not a big deal. But, but there's it, like, there's a lot, lot of kids here too selling stuff. And Chris was saying in the Sapa guides everywhere, they're like, don't buy from the kids because you don't want to encourage that Yeah, like that the government either. says, yeah. do not buy from the kids. It's like against the tourism guides because, you know, we want them to go to school and not to sell things. Yeah, so, uh, and they were really putting the sales on us in the restaurant too, which is really uncomfortable. And then they get angry and they leave. Yeah. But, it's annoying. It, 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 the sites are amazing and the hike is really fun. But there's not really any sellers on the hike, which is nice. It's mm -hmm. a bit, there's a lot of people, but not mm -hmm. too many. Yeah. But then you get to the towns, it's a lot. Hopefully it's not bad at the homestead. My tummy was a little sore on the hike. And it was the worst when she was trying to sell us stuff. So I was like, I'm not in the mood because I am having a crisis. And I don't want to be in this high pressure sales <laughs> I feel like Carson. Yeah. I was saying, out of all of the day, my stomach hasn't been bad since we like basically got to Bangkok, like the first week in Thailand. So for the past few months, it's been fine. And the one day that I start feeling sick again is the day we're doing a two night, two day overnight trek in rural Vietnam. Funny how life works, eh? We've got our lunch now. I'm having fried noodles with spring rolls. Yeah. Carson's having fried noodles with spring rolls too, but his has chicken in it. So that's one of the good parts about having um, these tours and having someone who like speaks language is that they will ask and make sure the spring rolls don't have meat in them and stuff like that. So like I said, this morning we started in Sapa City and we hiked to Yilin Ho, then Lao Chai, and then to Ta Van. So I'm gonna show you on the map. So this is Sapa City, this is where we started and then we walked all the way down here to where we are right now, which is like Wow, Chai. And then later today, we're gonna walk all the way over here to Tao Van. And then tomorrow, we're walking Tao Van to the bamboo forest and the waterfall, and then take a motorbike all the way back to Sapa Town. So like I said, this village that we're in right now is called Lao Chai. And it's really, really cute. The street is filled with all of these little shops. Like, morning because we just simply don't have room in our bags to buy a bunch of stuff we are at christmas gift shopping somewhat for caitlin tessa and brenda and colin so we'll take a little look see so we're walking on these ridges which are the rice terraces. I don't know if you can tell, let me extend. The rice terraces. Look at how cool this is. And so during um, harvest, they plant in April and then they harvest in September usually. So when the rice is growing during the summer, these are all filled with water because rice grows completely submerged. Um, and then in September, right before they harvest, everything's golden yellow. So that's what you see in all the pictures. It's just disappointing that we missed it. It's okay, because we want to come back to Vietnam and that gives us an excuse to. So our guide was saying that the Hmong people, they only harvest um, once here, like I said, because the weather in the north, that's basically all you can do. But she also said that they do everything by hand, unlike in the south. So in the south, they can harvest two to three times a year because they have machines that do it. Which is really, really cool. And that's why the fields are terraced too, because the bigger the field, the more labor it takes. So, really cool seeing how all these local tribes do it. Oh. 
So now we're touring a traditional Hmong house, which is the tribe that lives in this city. It's so cool. Yeah. After they, their corn is coming down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. You go Hazan. Do you have a try this or not yet? No. Oh. They go Hazan, they don't have rice a lot. Oh, really? Most people that eat corn. Okay. Really? Yeah. So look, I do it. Let's see. Oh. They were using to cook, yeah. feeding the cow on pig. Oh, okay. because this one is not the sweet corn. This one is uh, the normal corn. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So that's why we're not eating. I and see. even when we eat, we don't eat this. So we don't eat the corn so much. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, do it. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, like oh. this. And then forward. And then forward? Like yeah. this way. Oh, this way. Yeah, this way. So, get oh. out. Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> You're not good at it, huh? Oh, you couldn't do a race oh, yeah, normal. <laughs> so, this um, grinds up the corn, you see? And um, they use it to feed the pigs. Yeah, if you're not singing, follow, follow the whole. I don't know which number or so far, right. just do it. Okay, so we are in the traditional Hmong house now. This family is still lives here. There are three different rooms. The first room, the first room is the kitchen. So there's a fireplace um, and then they have, this is all rice. There's also rice up here and rice over there. So they harvest once a year and they collect all of their rice for the entire year and then they just store it. Um, in here they also have the area where um, they sleep, so there's some bedrooms in there. And then they have the kitchen over here also. They're also making rice wine to sell this family. So there's rice wine in here. Um, and then it stays and it like ferments. ferments in here for two weeks. So this entire thing is filled with rice wine. And then in here, there's the kitchen. The second kitchen. Right now they're cooking um, food for the pig, um, which they won't eat. And then they also have this weaves, the hemp, like she was showing us. So you have the like piece of the hemp bark, right? And you peel it off into little strands and then you weave them by hand into big long strands. You boil them in ash water to get the color to white. And then you weave them in here like this. And then after you're done weaving it, you can take it over here to dye it. So this bin, this bin has ash water. But you can put the lavender. Oh, the indigo. Yeah, indigo. the indigo. That's what it was. The indigo is in here. This big... All of that paste is indigo and limestone, I think she said, but it turns it into a paste. And you put it into the water and it dyes it like this. And then you get that color. So that's everything in this house. Like I said, the family still lives here, which is super cool. It's all wood and concrete and it's just these three rooms. And she said that this house is 70 years old. It was originally the grandparents' house. And three generations still live in it, which is so cool. And they have the pig out there that they will eat from meat. They also have chickens and they have ducks and a bunch of other stuff. So over there is Tavan and over here is La Chai. Our guide was also saying that there are still not great um, literacy rates in these areas that a lot of people can't read or write, even in Vietnamese, um, which is why they stay generationally in their houses because they can't leave to go to the city 
because they don't know how to read or write. There is a school now, but she said the school only goes to age 15. At that age, people aren't ready to go to university yet. We saw a girl who was 16 and then she had a baby. So um, that's kind of the situation in these areas. That's why everything is so much more tight-knit and collective because everyone stays in their houses with their family. They do their subsistence farming and that's kind of the lifestyle. Big. Mm. Albino water buffaloes. Hello, buffalo. It's a water buffalo. The canyon with the water buffalo. Look it. Hello. Me with the baby buffalo. More baby buffaloes. There. I'm on a buffalo tour. I love all the buffaloes. And they're not meat buffaloes. I made that up, but that's what they are in my mind. They're for frolic, frolicking buffaloes. So behind me, this field, the um, big things are the water potatoes she said. And that is rice. I've never seen rice growing in the wild, ever. And I don't know what I thought it looked like, but it's not that. Oh no, he slipped. More buffalo spotted. We're having some tea at our homestay. It was a long walk. So we got to our homestay not too long ago, um, but I was really tired when we got here. So we didn't go out and do anything. <laughs> um, I'm just playing up how much we walked today. It honestly isn't that much compared to the days we did in Tokyo. 11.7K is what my phone says. 19,000 steps, 38 flights climbed, and 575 calories moved. So we went all the way from Sapa Town to here. And it was so good. My favorite part of the day was seeing the albino water buffaloes. And it came right up to the camera as you saw in the last couple of clips. And also look at this picture that I got. You can see it on my Instagram. I'll link it down below. It's so cute. What was your favorite part, Kristen? Of the day? Yeah. Um, I did, oh, I liked when we were trekking through the, like trekking on the rice terrace, the terrace rice fields, and then seeing the, uh, seeing the house, the Hmong house, that we got to go in and see how they actually live. And just talking to Mang about their lives. Mm -hmm. while we walked through it was very cool so all around just the learning about how they actually live was very cool tomorrow we're going to the bamboo forest and the waterfall but we're going with my sister so we'll say goodbye to her tonight i will leave all of her contact info in the description down below so that you can book her um because it was great and maybe we'll get a clip with her later on so you can meet her because i didn't really do an introduction earlier um but this whole thing was really really great the homestay is really cute and i really like being in this village with everyone Okay, I'm ready. Ready? Ready. Moon, So, we say in her mouth. Okay, in her mouth. Okay. We say e e -a -pe. We say three times. Okay. Like the two times, you say e a -pe. e a -pe. e a -pe. E -a -pe. The last time, like three times, two times you say safe, okay. but the last time you say uh, how, how. Okay. Like e of e of e e of how, how, how. Okay. Okay. Ready? 
So our host just brought, uh, why am I holding it like this? <laughs> our host yeah. just brought us um, special wine, rice wine that they made at their house. And I've been wanting to try it. It's the, it's this. <laughs> How do you say it? Tao. You say Tao Miao. Tao Miao wine. wine. Um, and uh, it looks like In this. English, it's translated like uh, apple cash. Apple like cash? Cat. Oh. Like Cat. The animal. Oh, okay. Oh, apple cat. So apple, apple cat. cat. Okay. Wild apple cat. Weird. And it comes it's in. Tao meow. Tao meow. Okay. Yeah. Apple cat. Does meow mean cat? Meow. Meow. <laughs> meow. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it smells sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Oh. Cheers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mohai yeah. Baso. <laughs> Oh, oh, I like that sweet. a lot. So for you. So we're wrapping it up at the homestay, and this stray dog came in, and oh, where is it? You can't see it anywhere. Oh, there it is. Stray dog came in, um, and it w was letting us pet it. But after getting snapped at in Thailand, I was kind of nervous, um, and then it came in and stole a dirty diaper from the kitchen and I didn't want to take it from a stray dog because I was worried it was going to snap at me but now we're just awkwardly letting it eat this dirty diaper in the like dining area of the homestay we're staying at and I don't know what to do. That's pretty yeah, there were all, all these holes in these posts or in the... In the... Mm -hmm. I feel like I should we just woke up at our homestay. It is the next day. We are hiking to the bamboo forest and the waterfall today. We had a really nice breakfast this morning. We had some coffee and some banana and pineapple pancakes. And now we're heading off with a new tour guide, Mang's sister. So we had the option of going through the bamboo forest or up and over the bamboo forest. And we chose through because we thought it would be prettier, but we walked a lot up anyways. So I wonder what the up over the bamboo is gonna be. Like look at how far we can. But it's so pretty. to start going down the next waterfall. Um, and we were speaking to our new guide today. Like I said, we have Meng's sister as our guide today. Um, and she was telling us more about the life of the Hmong people here in these villages in Sapa. Um, she was saying that to go to these schools, a lot of them are boarding schools that are really far away from the villages. So you have to pay to send your children there. Um, you have to pay their room and board because it's a boarding school. Um, just going to school, you don't have to pay for. Um, but 
she said that because of that, a lot of families have to decide which of their children they're going to be able to send to school because they can't afford to send all of them. Sometimes they have four, five, six children in their family. So traditionally they will send the boys to school and the girls will stay home. And that is why, like at the restaurant we saw yesterday, a lot of the time the girls that stay home are um, made to go work with the tourists selling bracelets and stuff like that. And that's why the Vietnamese government encourages you not to buy from the children because you shouldn't support this behavior. But knowing that backstory, knowing that the reason is that the families can't afford to send the girls specifically to school, it makes the situation a little bit harder to swallow. Hey, another thing when it comes to the Hmong people that live in the Sapa area is that they speak their native language of Hmong mostly. They, some, a lot of the time they don't speak English and they also do not even speak, they don't speak Vietnamese either. So if they want to go get a job in Sapa City, they have to speak at least Vietnamese a lot of the time. So that is why a lot of the time it's just subsistence farming here, which is how how they survive but it means that they don't have extra income that they can go and spend on sending their children to school she was also telling us like we heard yesterday that the women get married very very young here 15 16 they have children and then they continue on the tradition of subsistence farming um, but she hopes for her children that she can pay to send all of them to school because she speaks English, speaks Vietnamese, and she works as a local guide. And with that, she can pay to send her kids to school. And she hopes that her daughters will get married later in life, have children later in life, and be able to go on holiday like we are before settling down. So it's really interesting seeing how the people here live and seeing how these tribes have adapted to the world that we have created around these areas we specifically mean meaning the western world created these lifestyles of getting married late like Kristen and i said probably not going to get married until we're closer to 30 even though we've been together so long we may not have children um and it's interesting seeing how these tribes have adapted to that whether or not they want that whether or not the lifestyle subsistence farming is enough to survive in the world that we have created now um so it's just it's really interesting seeing how people here live and it gives you a great perspective and now we're on this viewpoint. We lost the mic cover when we were um, at our volunteering experience in Ocean City, so I'm like covering the directional mic. Hopefully it's not messing up the audio, but we are on this nice peak here. About to go to the second waterfall. like right down this road. Like it literally just goes right from there and then slips all the way down. So this is the bottom of that waterfall we saw from the top. It looks so cool. The hole in the bridge. saying this bridge was made by the government it's slightly better um that bridge they made themselves you can see and it doesn't hold the weight anymore because it's like stiff so <laughs> this is slightly better okay. very hard to do yeah, very yes long, yeah. yeah very long time yeah very long time This is the first time we're eating with a fork and I don't even remember how long. It's like I've almost forgotten how to do it.
So just finished lunch. The village we're in is called Santo Chai, and we are about to get the car back to Sapa City, um, which is at the end of our time in Sapa and also the last new place in Vietnam we're gonna go before we fly out to Chiang Mai on the 20th, which is Saturday. Uh, okay, okay. We are now in a second van. Um, this one's taking us to the bus station because we are headed back to Hanoi to the airport tonight. Um, so that's probably where the song's gonna end off because it's gonna be the last vlog from Vietnam. The next vlog will be in Thailand. So that's the end of exactly two months, essentially, that we spent. Exactly, actually no, exactly, exactly two, months two months that we spent in Vietnam. So we will update you maybe a little bit when we get back yeah. to the hotel with a nice little end off for our time in Vietnam. It was so good. But yeah, we'll see you when we get to the hotel in five hours. This bus is fancier than the usual buses we take because they're tagging the bags. Usually it's like a grab your bag and hope no one else does sort of situation. <laughs> okay, this bus around is space themed. Look at this. Chris is gonna climb on into his bunk. I love this place. <laughs> it really feels like we're in a spaceship. Look at these paws. It feels like we're uh, going to start going to laser tag. Yeah. Or like we're in a Star Trek bus. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see you in a night. <laughs> when you get off these buses, um, they give you like a bunch of shoes that you can wear. They're just plastic shoes and they look so stupid on Carson. Look at that. Look at the shoes! Look at his feet! <laughs> okay, I'm interrupting the vlog again. I said I wasn't gonna update until we got to the airport, but I'm updating now again on my phone. So this bus just pulled up and it was all pink and it had like an LED heart sign in it and I was like, what is going on there? And then we saw this sign in the rest stop. I think it's like a love bus where the beds are, oh the beds are totally double, you can see in one of them and you can sit there together. Person asked if the girls were included in the bus ticket. Alright, we have made it to the Hanoi airport and we are checking into our airport hotel. Walking across this like three lane highway. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we got to ha the Hanoi airport. Staying in an airport hotel for two days. We gave ourselves a day just in case we wanted to stay in Sapa longer and also because we really need a rest before we get to Chiang Mai. Um, so I will close off the vlog when we get to the hotel. And yeah, the bus ride was really good. 